Hi friends. Good morning. Here it is morning, 4.41 a.m. here in my neck of the woods. Um, I've already been up for a couple hours. I thought, well, I'm going to turn the camera on. I haven't had the camera on in a little tiny bit. And so sleeping isn't coming to me real well either these last couple of days either. Um, so the best thing for me to do when I can't sleep is to stitch. And I've been working on this one project and it's, I started, I had a piece of, of fabric that was just quilted, not quilted, but pieced together for a quilt. It's um, not very big. It's about eight inches by about 14 inches. First, I was thinking maybe it would be a, a cover for a, a journal, and maybe it will be. Actually, I just did see a slow stitch journal that somebody's working on, and it was kind of neat, too, because it was about this size. It's about this size that the lady's working on. But she's actually got um, like heavy paper pages in it, but then all of her, pa her pa all of her, um, all of her, her pages, she has takes then a smaller square of fabric and she does a small slow stitched prod like like this one here, this whole book. Then if I have it closed up and done will be about seven by seven ish, seven by eight. So if, if I put the pages, I was thinking if I put the pages in it and they're just a little bit smaller, but then each of the slow stitch projects are maybe six by six, then once they're put in there, they're just tacked or she's just gluing her slow stitch projects onto the pages and I thought well maybe that would work for this maybe that might be what I'll do for this because I always look for something something new and something different this one here I have spent hours on this one right here and so and but it's you know it's my spirit stitch the the difference between a spirit stitching and a slow stitching is Slow stitching is done all by hand. Spirit stitching, you can add machine stitching to it. And so not just machine stitching, though. It'll be a, a machine and slow. So it's get that thread in there and and just create. And, and as you can see, I don't have anything really that even matches or goes together. But it all goes together, you know. And so... Like this, well, here I have, I started with a yo-yo, um, and then I put the bullion tendrils on there, and then I put some pearls, then I just, I have these little white pearls here, and I've just been stitching them on, I don't know what I'll do when I'll run out of them, but I got lots. And I'll find where I can get more because I've been using a lot here. So I've got some pearls here around. Then here I just put some French knots. And I'm using yarn to make the French knots. And it makes a bigger knot. And I like that. Very flowery looking. And then I just added some pearls next to it. This was after... after well, I'm getting ahead of myself. After I... um had this piece that was just the piece together quilts piece then I added I laid on more scraps of fabric just raw edge scraps of fabric and I just kind of just laid them on here and there so see here you see what was already the background and these little pieces were just how I took them out of the scrap bag and I put them on there and then once I had the whole thing covered with just a few scraps, then I laid the tool. I love using the tool. And a white tool, I just laid that all over the top of this. And then I took my sewing machine 
and that's where you see these stitches across these little wavy stitches where I did use the sewing machine and attached that entire um, piece of tool so the whole thing's covered then in the tool well then I'm really ready to start the slow stitching part of it I could still add more machine stitching if that's what I want to do but I just um, I'm just slow stitching and so and then and then not having a um, having a plan I don't lay things out first or anything no plan in and so, and then I just start the different things. Like right here, I have three, three um, Suffolk puffs or yo-yos right there. And on them as well, I put some in the center then, on the centers of those three, which I overlapped them and then stitched them just with regular sewing thread and kind of overlapped them a little bit. And then I put on the the little um uh, french knots and and then the little beads the little pearl beads and they're so pretty this right here i have some ribbon and exact and it's not really even ribbon wait a minute let me get my flashlight here so i can see down in my box and let's see I have, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Okay. Hmm. Well, that's interesting that I got two rolls of it and I don't know where I put them because are they still up here in my pile on the. Hmm. Well, it's anyway, it's like a ribbon. Oh, good night, you moist. I am the worst when it comes to... Okay, I don't... I don't see... Jeez. Well, why'd I turn off my light? Okay. Um... I have two spools of it. And I don't even know where I put them. Got yarn over here. Okay, well, anyway. It, it comes... This ribbon comes in, in like you would find it in the yarn section, I guess. I got it at a yard sale, so, um, but it comes on a spool like yarn would come. And it's missing in action. But, um, and then I made these little kind of like ribbon roses right here. And I, uh, the little ribbon roses, and, and then I put some pearls with them. And then this was this green then was one of the pieces of fabric I had just laid on there. And then I just did a running stitch or a back stitch around the shape of that piece. I still want to put something over this kind of little piece. I haven't done that yet. Then here, this was interesting. I had, this actually was a piece of fabric underneath that kind of looked like a swirled seashell. But as you can see, I have a lot of fibers on there. And I want to show you what I, <clears throat> how I came up. Oh, here's a piece of that ribbon I have on here. And it's not even ribbon. It's something, I guess, that you crochet with or knit with even. <coughs> and so I don't know what it's even called. But it is really pretty and it's like real soft. So next time I go to a store, I'll look at it and see if I can find like different colors. But one of the spools that I have is a like a cream color. So I'm feeling like I can I can change those colors around. But I want to show you what I did here. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Um, I'm just gonna take out. A couple of few. Oh, here it is. How come it's right here in front of my schnock? No, that's not it. This is it. I've got a bucket underneath my table, a bin, and in there I've got different things. See here, 
there's a spool of the cream color. This one's got a label on it, but it's Katia Ola. Made in Spain, 38% viscosa rayon, 38% all good, and 24% poly, so nylon. Okay, so it's rayon, cotton, and nylon. It really doesn't give you a whole lot of... Yeah, it doesn't give you a whole lot. Do not bleach. But anyway, it is like a ribbon, but it comes on a spool like this here. And you can stitch, you put that in a large eye sewing a needle, and it stitches through just like thread. So that is fun to use. And because I have this one spool of this light color, I think I can really put some color on that one with sprays and change that color around. Okay, now I was at this... Uh, this, I was at this, uh, at this, um, oh, I used a piece of this. Okay, so let me see. I have this, and then I have this, and then I have this very colorful, and then, let's see, what would, okay, what's this? Let's put a piece of this. They don't even look good together, do they? Okay. Now, so that's what I've got here. I've got these four pieces. Oh my gosh, and I wish I knew what this was. This was on a little bit of a spool. It was like an almost empty spool. And that was another yard sale thing. But it's kind of textured. And it's kind of silky. Don't know what it is. But I just used that right here when I was doing seed stitches right there I use that and it sews through so pretty and smooth and around here around the edges is where I did well I did a running stitch with the ribbon of the lavender and then I went with in the spaces between the run the lavender I used that cream color and did the running stitches and kind of twisted the ribbon as I was going and that sure turned out pretty. Okay, now get back to point. Back on point there, Elizabeth. Okay, so now what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a piece. I'll start with a, this piece of this green fuzzy stuff. I'm just going to take it as long as my, as my glass here. And so there. And then... I take another piece. Okay, this is uh, like eyelash trim. That's a pretty color. And I'm going to lay that with it. Now see, um, okay, so then I got that one and that one. I'll try to keep my things in little baggies when I throw them down in the, in the bin here, and then they don't get all tangled up. Now this one, as you can see, this one I think... This would be hard to use. I don't know what exactly people use this stuff for. Let me get a piece off of here. It's always, see, because it's a string and then a lump. A lump and then string and a lump and a string and a lump and a string. I don't know what it's made for. But if you take a piece of that, and I'm just going to take a piece of that, and just as long as this other's, ish sort of kind of put that there and um then i have this one more piece this little piece here is already twisted and wound but this came with my weaving stuff so i don't know what in the world that is either but it feels like it's all cotton and then i'm just going to um take a piece of that again the same way there we go so now i have find my bag to put that in okay now so then I put them four lengths together see I put them four lengths together and then I just start twisting them just twist
And look at that when I got it twisted. And so then, but I gotta kinda hold it as I'm twisting so it doesn't untwist, like see I just dropped it there and untwisted some. Just keep twisting till you get that whole length twist. Twisted, you know, do the twist. The peppermint twist. Where am I going? Wait, let me hold this end down here. Okay, that's better. And then just, I just keep twisting it. And then, you can't get too much you can't really get too much a length, too big of a length, because that would be really hard to hang on to. But I'm holding on to this end here so it doesn't untwist while I get the rest of it twisted. But, you know, you might take more time than I just did picking out your colors that you want to twist together because maybe you want to use all... Um, light colors or whatever whatever color you know all different shades of pink or all different shades of green or whatever okay and then so now it's all twisted in one little twist but then i noticed that when i when i did that piece that i got on there oh darn it and then i drop it just a minute let me see i'm not perfect i was perfect once that was the day I was born. I went downhill from there. Okay, now. I love how that eyelash, eyelash trim is sticking out and groovy. Okay, now I'm going to bring these two ends together. The two ends, hold them together. And then that piece just automatically twisted together. And look how pretty that is. It just, so now the two ends are here, and there it is twisted together, because I let go of it like a little dork, but let me just kind of put it back together. It's still good. And so, before I lose any more of it, I'm just going to take a piece of this on the end take a piece of this one here and then I'm going to just go here and I'm going to tie it on the end and then it's going to stay because both of those ends are right here and I twisted it and then when I folded it in half it twisted it itself against itself even more now I put that tie on there and it's not going to come undone but look at that how pretty that is now if that was going to be couched on like a stem on something like if I was to use this this way and I was gonna put a stem on this flower this way I can't do it that way because my chicken would be in the wrong place see but look how pretty that is well that is kind of what I did right here and look at I even had a piece of a real long stringy eyelash uh, and this here piece, too, let me see if I can find that one real quick here with my handy-dandy flashlight. This was one. I got some weird stuff down here, different fibers. And a lot of them that I didn't know, what am I going to do with these fibers? Because they're, um, well, like I say, I've got a, a lot. And, oh, here it is. Now, this is some kind of a, this is some kind of a weird fiber. Um, Barocco Plume FX. First in fashion, care instructions, hand wash, whatever. Okay. Okay, Plume, oh, Plume FX is as an 
is an effect yarn to be held together with a knitting yarn. It will not change the gauge of the main yarn. So this one Do you see how that is? Can you see how that is? It's like a thin... It's hard to see, isn't it? But it's got just these little dangles of threads off, off of it. And like it just said, it's, it's meant to be used with something else. Well, I used it in this when I was twisting it. And so just everywhere, every little space there, there's that little piece, this little piece that just kind of fringes out and it is so pretty. And so I was glad that I went through, cause I just went through this bucket that I have of, um, of fibers just to see what I have in there and um, to come up with different different um different ideas and like this piece it's like a thin thread and but it's got like tied in it ever so often is a piece of fuzzy about every four inches there's a piece of fuzzy so i get this one didn't have a label on it but i'm assuming it's the same thing that you use it with yarn and so I learned something. You use it with yarn, and then those little little ends like that give your piece a little bit more fun. And then I wanted to show you here. This I haven't. I've braided this, but I haven't used it on anything yet. But this I took. I took this yarn. I took a strand of this line brand country. I took a strand of that, and then this is velvet. Oh, I took two strands of this. Then on each one of these, I took four strands because it's much thinner, but it's velvet yarn. And so I took four strands of this, four strands of this one, and two strands of this one. And then I braided them together to make this braid. And it is so soft. It is so, so pretty. And again, now if I use some of that effect yarn, some of this effect yarn, I guess it's effect yarn because it gives you an effect and only because I just read that there. And that's not like I even know what this stuff is, but I just read it. And that's what that's for is to go with a regular to add it to a regular piece of yarn that you're using. So if I was to have put this in with a braid, I would have all these little, little puffs that just stick out here and there. So that's good to know. I just learned that. I'm still learning stuff. Oh, see here I had taken out, this is just a bias tape. And I want to try this because it's really, I'm going to try this to see if I can sew that through. Oh yeah, see that's where I had a couple more little pieces of um, that ribbon stuff that I don't know what the heck it is. So, but yeah, this is, I'm going to give, I'm going to be giving this a shot. And that's probably, I'm probably going to do that today is to play with that. Not sure what I'm going to do with this. Maybe I'll do something on this piece. I don't know. But it's just, it's so if you have a lot of fiber, and the thing is too, even fabric, if you have strips of fabric and you just take your fabric, and because I've seen even, now I think it was Susan Ernst I seen that put a, um, did a, like a little, pocketbook a little handbag and the hand the handle of it is is um braided strips of fabric and of scrap fabric and boy i am into my scraps but i love this now when i got it finished there and i had like the extras see this is what was is i came to the end here and so i said oh well i didn't have them all the same but when i tied it 
on the end here, I left these little ends on because now if I want to take and just, if I want a piece, but I only want a piece about five inches long, what I'll do is I'll use a piece of this extra down here, I'll cut it off and I'll tie a knot as long as I want that piece. And then about a half an inch from it, I'll tie another knot and I'll cut in between and that'll keep the braid from coming apart. In the same way with this, if I make the, I made this piece, it's about eight inches long. Well, if I only want a part of this one, I'll tie it, put a tie right. If I only want about three inches of this, then I'll put a tie right here real tight and about a half inch away from it, I'll put another tie and cut in between. And then the rest of it is still there and ready to go. But, um, I think that's pretty. That's just to make your own, you know, to get your own um, different things that you can come up with, especially if you have fibers and yarns that you're not using right now. You might think, oh, this is just not pretty enough or something. And, and like, like this one, really, if you look at it, it's not all that pretty. But when you start adding this to something else, and braid it or twist it, it just, it's amazing. It's just, it's just amazing. And so I want to twist some more today. I think I just want to do some twisting. I need to have stuff to do. I need to have stuff to do. My mind is all over the place. I, um, I want to update you all. I want to update you all. Let me see. I'm going to get a, I can't talk without having something to stitch so I'm going to let's see I'm going to just do some seed stitching uh, I'm going to get some I want to get a piece of something maybe I need to have colorful right here so I'm going to use some of this sashiko I have some of this sashiko let me take a piece of that that one, I already have those cut into lengths. And so, and I'm just going to, I'm just going, now see, you know, here, when you have no plan and you're just doing spirit stitching, it's, you don't have to have a plan. It's just wonderful. So I'm going to, okay, I'm just going to go on this little triangle right here. And so I'm just going to start putting seed stitches on there. That's one of the things that is really not in a seed stitch is just a whole bunch of little stitches going in all different directions. That's it. Just a whole bunch of little stitches going in different directions. And because this Shipshiko yarn, this a thread that I'm using right now is just all different colors. That'll look pretty, that whole little. And then maybe I'd go all, all the way around it, maybe even with a with a running stitch but I want to just update you on my brother all of you have been praying for him and I appreciate that so much and um, and I had told you that his cancer had was getting better it was every bit of it was shrinking he had three different kinds of cancer every one of them shrinking but then he had COVID three times during this amount of time that he's been battling the cancer, which has only been uh, six, August, September, October, November, December, January, six months he's been battling the cancer. Well, it was doing better, but the three times that he had COVID and this is with the shot. He um, got, ended up with what they called COVID lung. COVID lung is, there's nothing they can do for that. And well, day before yesterday, he entered the gates of heaven It's, um, 
when something like this happens, especially, my brother has been in extreme pain for a long time with this. Uh, when he first went to the doc, when his wife finally convinced him, you need to go to the doctor. That's ridiculous that you're hurting this bad. Goes to work every day hurting so bad and, and having her rub asper cream or something on his back make the pain go away and she finally convinced him you need to go to the doctor and that's when they found that he had colon liver and lung cancer and so they've been battling with that now for these six months and it was amazing because the last PET scan he had a couple of weeks ago showed that everything every bit of the cancer had shrunk significantly and that was the word the doctor used was significantly and um, but then the coughing his coughing and the cough and they said well no nope, the cancer in your lung it shouldn't be making him cough that way and well they found it was the COVID the COVID had um, pretty much taken over his lungs and I guess the COVID lung, it, it, the way they said it builds like little crystals in your lungs and the crystals will get bigger and then an antibiotic might help him a little bit, but not much, which he had got to the hospital the day before because he was having so much trouble and his oxygen level had went down to 60, which is really, really low. And, um, and then it was the next day that he he um, entered through the Golden Gates, and he's now an angel watching over everybody. But um, they had him on a, they had put him on IV antibiotics to try and clear up them lungs, but it just, I guess it just had took. It had already grasped him too much, and the antibiotic didn't do much. Didn't do well. And when you look at it, and you and you know, and I've been just kind of in a daze. My head is just buzzing. It's my little brother. He's 13 years younger than I am, so that means I was 13 years old when he was born. So I was pretty much like his little. Um, pretend mommy, you know, and um, my mother worked. I took care of my younger siblings quite a bit, and um, and so he was almost like my little kid, and here I am. He's 59. I'm 72. I should be the one. I should be the one um, up there trying on angel wings and not him he should be still here but you know I I was saying to myself well um, I believe in angels I I am one who really believes in angels and um, I asked God I said why is it that young have to die you know Good people have to die so young. And, and, and my brother's a good people. Good people. He was a good grandpa. He still is because he's watching over his grandchildren. But um, he's a good man. He's just somebody who would do anything for anybody. Work very hard to make a living. He's just... He just did so well, and and then you know it. You, you know, um, but I have to say that you know, in his immediate family now, there is some sadness going on. There's a there's some sadness. Well, let me just say it. He's got a a daughter that is going through a divorce, and. And it's kind of kind of frightful because we don't know, oh, I don't know if the ex to soon to be ex is going to be, I'm kind of afraid of him myself. 
And so then I worry about my niece. I worry about her being out there and hopefully everybody stays safe. Well, now my brother was taken to be an angel or a spirit guide at some, some young age. And then I think, well, you know, he was very concerned for his daughter, too. His, I mean, which his daughter is strong, and she can take care of herself, and she'll be fine. But then I say, well, did God decide that he needed for my brother Rick to be a, a, an angel right now so that because Rick could do so much for his daughter by um, just being on this earth. He can do more. You guys might think I'm completely goony wacky, but um, he can do more now for his daughter and his family now that he is an angel he can go guide her he can watch over them children as they grow up he can guide his daughter he can keep her out of danger he can do all of these things he couldn't do when he had that earthly body stuck to his spirit do you all think i'm i don't know it's You know, I I could be not right. Maybe I'm not right. I don't know. But you know what? Thinking that way makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. And I know it's not all about me. It's not all about me. My brother is gone. I mean, his body is gone. My brother is such a... He is a, like a comedian. My family is... Is just my whole family is a comedy act. My daughter was saying, well, actually, when he passed, I wasn't at the hospital with them, but um, the hospital is only like five miles from here. But my daughter was there. Two of my sons was there. A nephew was there. Daughter-in-law was there. Two daughter-in-laws, of course, his wife was there. And so there was people around him. And they just stayed around him. They just stayed with him, you know, even after he passed. And they talked to him like, of course, he was just right there. And then after a while, the nursing staff said, um, not to be rude or pushy or anything. But even after they were there a couple hours, they said, well, um, you guys, I, we're going to have to kind of wrap this up because we do have to get get things going here you know whatever they say you know i don't know what they say exactly but i wasn't there and um my daughter who's in the, jennifer i swear she's a mess too my whole family they're uh, it's a comedy act my whole family and um she says yeah we can do that because you know they've been they've been there and they were crying and they was laughing you know how people do this cry and then maybe a memory would come up and they would laugh and then they were talking to rick just like he was just laying there listening but he was just laying there listening well he wasn't laying there listening he was up in a corner somewhere listening and and then my daughter she says i told rick i said i i told uncle rick he, that um well, they're running us out of here because they figure they need, before your rigor mortis starts getting in there, that they need to do something with you. You'll be heck to handle. I said, Jennifer, you didn't say that. She goes, yes, I did. It was Uncle Rick. And then I said, yeah, it was Uncle Rick. And But that is exactly, um, exactly how... Rick would have been if it was somebody else. He would have been exactly that same way. And so, because that's how our family is. We just, just a comedy act. It's just crazy. Um, we're, we're just crazy. And we love ourselves like that. We like being this way. And so, I'm really not sure yet what the, plans are um he did not want a funeral he wanted 
nothing to do with a funeral, so there's not going to be a actual funeral, but then they're going to have a celebration of life later. Um, everybody will kind of grieve together on their, you know, how people grieve. Everybody grieves different. And like I had a moment yesterday and of with all people, my grandson, he was here to, I mean, where I went through my sobbing and just, it was the first time I just really, really just felt like I was falling apart. And my 13 year old son was here to, you know, cause I kind of felt bad that I wasn't there. I gosh, I wish I was there with my brother. I wish I was there with it with everybody. And then and then after then the next night then everybody was over at Rick's house with his wife and um they had a campfire in the back and they were all sitting around the campfire and laughing and crying and grieving in, in that way. And but I wasn't there because I go nowhere. And I felt like I really missed something by not having that. And then, and then Jennifer was here the next day when she was dropping off Jeffrey because she had to go to, she's just right in the middle of switching jobs too. So she had some, I mean, working at the same place, but switching positions. And so she had some things she had to do. So she was bringing Jeffrey over and um, I started saying something to her, but then I could tell she was just so, she was so just exhausted because she was, has been right there for Michelle. She's like, you know, the Rick's wife. She's, I don't want to call her a widow because I don't like that word. Um, she'll always be his wife. And... And she took wonderful care of him. But she, Jennifer has just been right there with her. Just, I mean, through the, she even found the doctor, I mean, that accepted to take him even with no insurance. And, um, well, then she did get insurance later, but that's a whole nother story. But and Jennifer was just exhausted so I knew I couldn't talk to Jennifer and and it's like I feel oh so alone and 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 I guess that is kind of a selfish feeling but but I just felt so alone and then after Jennifer left then I just um I lost it I just I'm sitting in my chair and I just lost it I just it's just like everything just comes to a boiling point and I was amazed how Jeffrey I mean you know how some people are just a good listener Jeffrey's 13 years old and what an amazing listener and so so that's what I um so look at there isn't that pretty I just did a whole lot of seed stitches in that multicolored thread and then I just went around it with the multicolored thread on that piece so you don't have to have just a particular plan of anything but well I don't know what I'll do with this when I'm done but you know what I think I'll know I think I'll know that I'll a lot of my, um, I have been used working on this through these last couple of days, just about constantly, just this. And so I do believe that I will make this into my little book that I will add small pieces of spirit stitching in there. And this is going to be kind of my It won't have pictures of my brother. It won't even have stories of my brother. But it'll have the thoughts of my brother in here. It, because the thoughts going through my mind as I do each one of these stitches 
I'll know that this here one I just did now when I was talking to you, you all. I could never part with this piece right here. And this is how when I do a prayer flag too, I'll do a prayer flag and I have that person that I'm thinking about while I'm doing a prayer flag and that person is on my mind the whole time I'm doing a prayer flag. This is going to be who knows what it'll end up with. And I, I think I'm going to do what that lady did with the paper pages. Well, I'll put a lining on this, of course. and um, But then the pages are going to be paper pages. And then I'm going to make the, um, the, the art pieces are going to be separate. But then I'm going to put them in here. And I'll make them all the same size. Probably a six by six six or maybe a five by five even and they'll all fit inside of here but I love this look at this was just a little flower I have this um, one little you know, I have this little bag, this little bag is inside of this little bag. But inside here I have just a bunch of little odds and ends, different things. There's a crocheted, there's a, look at their little smiley face and a little beautiful things that people have sent me and somebody sent me this that that'll go on a page I have so many beautiful things look at that one there just beautiful but a lot of these things I can just pull something and then there's circles in here that are ready for me to make just into a into a um yo-yo or these I use the same circles to make these little flowers and then I have I think there's one started there but see I can just dig into this bag and pull out anything in this bag I have a lot of these little pieces in fact I think I'm going to take a these are just a bunch of little pieces oh how pretty that I've made out of just fabric scraps and I've just scrunched them together. But look at that one. It's just a scrunched piece of fabric. Looks like a flower. But they can be... I've got some different sizes. Different things that I've just scrunched together. And when I make these, I don't have any plan even to what I'm going to do with them. I just make them and then I stuff them in this little bag. And then you look at them later on and they're a whole different, you see a whole different something in them. This is all, these are all made out of that, those sorry fabrics that I took out of that rug and then made little pieces. And so in fact, I think I will keep this piece this piece out here and I think maybe this one maybe I'm going to couch that in right here I'm going to couch that in somewhere here this is where it's going to fold so I'll keep in mind that I won't put too much heavy right there along where it's going to fold so I won't put anything I wouldn't I won't put it up here because that'd be on the fold so I like this. I like this. Doesn't match anything, really, sort of. It sort of doesn't match anything. But, um, so I think I'm just going to stitch that. Maybe I'll just put it right down there. Start it right there. Okay. Well, that's just what I wanted to do for now. I wanted to kind of, 
um, update you on on my dear brother and the new angel in heaven my brother so I'm going to I want to read something let me see oh here's the book I want right here oh look at that the name of this book it says lead us safely home my brother is safely home Okay, well, I'm just going to open this book. Let's see, right here. On the Wings of Faith. Dare to dream bright, lofty dreams with purposeful intent. Dare to plan a noble course to take and to augment. Dare to strive to be your best in everything you do to value truth and honesty so they'll reflect on you dare to soar to greater heights on wings of faith and love knowing that god's guiding light is shining from above on the wings of faith and you know what i'm thinking as i was reading that is my brother telling me that he's got his wings now my brother is telling me this this is what my brother is telling me Dare to dream bright, lofty dreams with purposeful intent. Dare to plan a noble course to take and to augment. Dare to strive to be your best in everything you do. To value truth and honesty so they'll reflect on you. Dare to soar to greatest heights on wings of faith and love, knowing that God's guiding light is shining from above I do believe I do believe my brother is telling me that right there that's a message from my brother here it says I Isaiah 40 31 they that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They that soar with eagles' wings, they will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. That's from Isaiah 40, 31. Wow. I ask God to watch over you, each and every one of you, every step you take and every move you make. Keep you safe, keep you happy, healthy, one day at a time. God bless you all. Thank you for watching.